Today on This Week in Startup, Billy Chasen, the founder of Sticky Bits, is with us. Another entrepreneur takes a dip in the shark tank, and Kathy Choi brings us the news. Possibly even Tyler brings us an insight after 0 and 2, the last two episodes. Don't put, don't, don't, don't get me started. Don't even get him started. Get He's going to bring it this time on This Week in Startups. That's what it's all about, man. Hey, shit. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Yeah. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on another This Week in Startups. It's episode number 113, 113. We're just cruising right along here. Uh, Tyler, how are you doing? Are we numbering these sequentially? Is that how these go? Yeah, it's a sequential number. Yeah, it's not randomized. Okay. Um, If you would like to get one of these beautiful This Week in Startup bags, just thank any of our sponsors like SendGrid or GoToMeeting uh, on your Twitter account or your Facebook, and we'll find it because we do those searches. And you'll get a This Week in Startups um, bag. It's not a man bag. It's a messenger bag. Suitable for men or women, very subtle, uh, and inside of it is a ticket to the launch conference only 20 days away, 21 days away, I believe. Just go ahead and tweet. Thank you to uh, any of the sponsors. You know who they are. Hey, we're doing something interesting. We had all this extra inventory in the network. Everybody knows the network's got 25 shows. We're growing very quickly, only two salespeople. Just like Weblogs Inc., inventory is growing faster than we can explain the value proposition to advertisers. So we had an interesting idea. Hey, let's do an auction. Uh, and so on the site, if you go to thisweekend.com, we have a run of auction. You can see here on my laptop, a run of auction, uh, run of network auction. And so what this means is you can go in here and it's the, the auction starts at 25 and you, all these shows are doing really well. Tens of thousands of users, hundreds of thousands of users overall, um, tens of thousands of users per show. Uh, YouTube, American Idol Books, Annie Duke, Mobile, Hara, Cloud Computing. And uh, you get all these passionate internet people watching them. And we did this video here. And so you basically, I think for $400 or $1,500, we had two different auctions, two different weeks. But this dude is from fashion. And talk about something you good. Need to just calm and that down. is TakeTake.com, my yes, friend. Yes. And he's doing exciting. this ad for TakeTake.com. Well, okay, it's got see, the lower third with the logo. For instance, I see Michelle Williams wore a bad Valentino and he's dress. Just, I write on TakeTake. It's fabulous. I don't like Valentino. So then and then he doesn't like Valentino. This guy's Valentino great. Um, it, and so, I think you mean like he's fabulous. So I'm not like I think he's either. fabulous. <laughs> and <laughs> you can get your startup or your company in there, and the bidding starts at 25 I think this week, we're at $202. So go in there and put a bid in for 250 bucks. You get like 20 shows, millions of views. It's well worth it. Is uh, my head, the side of my head is not part of it. No, we're not going to put this separate, separate, separate thing. Separate. Okay. So anyway, go check out the auction. It's a pretty clever idea, um, and people are getting a great deal on the inventory. And then what happens is the person who did the auction, they liked it so much, they're going to do it more often, sure. and they buy the inventory. So it's almost like an educational lead gen kind of part. So anyway, you guys get to watch uh, This Week in Startups grow, and um, you know, part of the fun of that is finding interesting new business models to engage people. And we actually had Squarespace on last week. Yes. And he couldn't stop talking, Anthony, about yeah. how awesome this week in te- yeah. tech was and yeah. Revision 3 for building his brand. Yeah. I mean, advertising on yeah. these kind of shows works, and using GoToMeeting works, and it works seamlessly. Uh, just this morning, we were going over the TechCrunch 50, oops, launch conference, um, winners, not winners, uh, people who are getting in, and we were doing all these uh, videos of them presenting on GoToMeeting. It's free voice over IP uh, and phone conferencing. Uh, head over to go to meeting and try um, their wonderful product for 30 days with the promo code start it's unlimited uh, you don't have to get on airplanes you don't have to deal with the snowstorms that are going on in New York I got trapped there uh, and it just works and that's what I keep telling you guys it just works and if it just works and you, if you don't even notice how that go to meeting is in the meeting and that's what you can tell it's a great product just like your wonderful iPad just let you read just like the wonderful iPhone let you surf the web or music on your iPod. You know, the best products just work and you forget that you're even using that product. I forget sometimes I'm using GoToMeeting. I feel like I'm right in the meeting with somebody. Mm-hmm. I feel like they're right in the room. That's a good point. You don't the even know. The best products, you, yeah. they just, you know, they just work. Yeah. And you forget, like, oh my God, I'm driving a car right now. This is beautiful. Like, it just works. Mm-hmm. Uh, never breaks down, never crashes, uh, in my experience. And uh, you're going to love it. So thank you at GoToMeeting. Everybody thank you. Go. Uh, 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 Everybody thank at GoToMeeting on their 
Twitter, Facebook. The interesting thing about Flare GoTo guns. Meeting is yeah. the other players in that space, Adobe does a lot of other stuff. He's a lot of stuff. <clears throat> Skype does, it's not even their bread and butter to no. do that. Go to meeting like they are. They're focused it's on in it. their name. It's yeah, like, it's, like, yeah, it's about meeting. Yeah. And I was on a go to meeting row this week, and we were taking notes. Uh, it's got like a little note thing where you can have a notepad. So I was on a board meeting. We're using go to meeting, and I'm taking notes yeah. of the board meeting while they're showing screenshots on the left. Yeah. So these guys from GDGT were showing the new version, which is totally hot. And I was taking notes as the founders were doing it. Everybody else was seeing my note taking. It was just really like it just worked. Yeah. And it was almost like. We were in the same room, even though we were in three different cities. Uh, and it was during the snowstorm in New York. Some people couldn't get to New York. They were in Boston. It was Boston, San Francisco, LA, and New York, four cities. On a board meeting, flawless. Thank you, Echo 2 Meeting. Today on the program, Billy Chasen is here. He is the founder of Sticky Bits. And he worked um, on um, Chartbeat. I'm going to have to ask him about that. His first job was making bagels, um, which are delicious. I can tell you that. Uh, welcome to the program, Billy Chasen. Thanks for having me. Uh, so doing? now, tell me about the background here. You were uh, involved in Betaworks in some way? Yeah, I, uh, so I co-founded Betaworks with John and Andy. Yeah. Um, and uh, there I was basically responsible for coming up with new projects. Uh, the first thing I created was something called Firefly, which was a way to uh, basically see everybody's mouse cursors on, on a website. You can actually see their mouse, mice moving around and then you can chat to them. It was very weird. But uh, the thing that, that happened was we, I saw that we were getting all this real-time data about all these people that were on all these different websites. So uh, when Firefly wasn't really grabbing, um, uh, grabbing on, I said, why don't we just turn this, this entire product around and make it all about uh, analytics and give everybody real-time analytics. And so that's how Chartbeat was born. Yeah, John Borthwick um, was telling us about Firefly uh, on the program a couple episodes ago. And he said everybody was fascinated by it. But it didn't integrate itself into people's daily lives. Like, what is the point of this? And I can tell you, Chartbeat, that is a really fine product that's integrated into everybody's life here at Mahalo this weekend, launch, other companies. Uh, and of course, I'm an investor and an advisor to the company and love it. Um, and now, your first job uh, making bagels, where? In Brooklyn, Queens? <laughs> what borough? No, I grew up, I grew up uh, in, in a small town called Oyster Bay on Long Island. Oyster Bay on Long Island? Are you kidding me? Billy Joel. Yeah, hey. Right? We're famous for Billy Joel and Teddy Roosevelt. You got it. Was he from Oyster Bay? Billy Joel? Yeah. Um, or he just I, mentions it in a song, or was that the album? I, th he now, I know he definitely has a house in Oyster Bay now. I'm not sure if he was there, uh, uh, if he was born there. I don't think he was born there, but he definitely has a house there. Yeah. Um, blah, 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 blah. Oh, there's a song, Oyster Bay. That's what it is. Yeah. Uh, and he has the Cold Spring Harbor, too, is an album. Cold Spring Harbor, yeah. He's a big Long Island guy. So is yeah. that the North Shore Oyster Bay? Yeah. It's on the North, North Shore. Shore. Yeah. yeah. Um, worked at Fact Set, and now you're doing Sticky Bits. Tell everybody, uh, what is Sticky Bits? Why should sure. they care? <laughs> so uh, Sticky Bits is a platform to basically attach digital content to physical objects. Uh, and we do that through uh, scanning barcodes um, and to kind of the best way that I, when I say that, everybody just kind of glazes over. Uh, so the best way to really describe it is through an example. If you take a birthday card and we sell stickers that have barcodes on them, and you take one of those stickers and you put it into a birthday card, uh, and you can scan it with your, with your phone and attach a video of yourself singing happy birthday uh, to your mom. And then when your mom gets the card, she also scans the barcode and the video starts playing on her phone. So it was a way to basically attach uh, that video, that digital video, onto a physical thing, uh, the card. And we do that through, through any barcode. It works with anything. So you can also scan Coke cans. Uh, and since every Coke can shares a barcode, uh, every single barcode turns into a little community uh, where people can post videos, uh, tips, reviews. You can scan a book and add uh, what you thought about the book, things like that. So in a way, uh, I have the video right here playing. Maybe we can put a picture uh, by a picture when I'm playing the video. Um, and uh, picture by a picture, maybe the picture on the right and me on the left. Uh, what the idea here, I think, is in some ways similar to um, uh, get glue in a way. You, you know, you're pivoting around an object, creating a social network around an object, except you're doing it by scanning the object. Right. Um, and yeah, and, and so in, in scanning that object, 
uh, not only can people add uh, their own reviews and tips and anything like personal messages, but we also allow brands to actually run promotions. So we ran a promotion with Fiji Water where you can scan a Fiji Water bottle and potentially win a year supply of Fiji home delivery. And we ran one with Ben & Jerry's where if you scanned any of their fair trade pints, they would send you a free Ben & Jerry's t-shirt. And so in a way, it's like Gowalla or Foursquare. I guess Gowalla, you're forced to be in the location. Foursquare, you can sort of fake it a little bit. But uh, this is a way for people to know that you've actually interacted with this real world object because if you haven't scanned the barcode, it doesn't work, correct? Right, exactly. And the the actually, we just started running some um, some surveys with people that, that were using the Ben & Jerry's, uh, that, that actually were involved in the Ben & Jerry's promotion. And I believe we had, we had about 40% of the people say that they then bought the product afterwards uh, after scanning it, you know, just because they, who doesn't like Ben & Jerry's? So what was the contest you did with them? You, you scanned the pint of uh, Jerry, Cherry Garcia and you tweeted and then you, you win a pint or how does it work? It was, it was even simpler than that. It was just scan uh, any of their fair trade pints, which are, uh, I believe it was like vanilla, chocolate, and a few other basic flavors. Uh, and then that's it, you win. And it just asks for your, your mailing address so that we can mail you the shirt. Now, I, was um, Seth Goldstein involved with the company at all in the early days? Yeah, Seth, so Seth is, is my co-founder. Ah, got uh, it, because he came up yep. to me at South by Southwest last year and was like, hey, check, take a look at this. And he, you know, had the sticker on something and he takes a picture of it and then it was like, oh, and here's information about it. And I was like, you know, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Like, well, I'm gonna go put stickers on people or, you know, outside of restaurants and then I'm gonna take pictures of it. It just seems incredibly inefficient. If I'm in the location already, shouldn't it know my GPS or coordinates? But it looks like you've pivoted and actually made this into uh, some sort of um, a Groupon-like contest engine where um, you scan an object in the real world, that's a product, you, you say you like it or whatever, and you may win. I mean, it, it, is that a pivot? Uh, are you guys a platform or for, you know, a, a community? Or is it, a, um, is it now a contest engine, a, a sweepstakes engine? Uh, well, we did, we did definitely uh, focus more recently on this new version two. Uh, a, 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 apart from the the one that we launched last year at South by Southwest, um, hold on a second, my computer just froze there. Uh, so uh, we did change from that one. This this second version definitely focuses more on the products and barcodes that are around us. This was basically um, part. Of, it, it was a bug that turned into a feature of Sticky Bits. We launched at South by Southwest, um, and we gave out sticker packs that had individual barcodes all unique barcodes in them. We gave away 12,000 of those. And, uh, but we also told people, hey, by the way, you can actually scan any barcode. It works on any barcode. And that was kind of, that was just kind of like, you know, it was something that just happened automatically with the red laser uh, library that we use. And so by doing that, uh, after South by Southwest, we actually looked at our, our analytics and we saw that the majority of scans that were happening were on barcodes that already exist uh, in the world, on, on Red Bull bottles, water bottles, uh, anything else. So that's when we really decided that we had something there. Uh, so and we also- You listened, uh, you listened to the metrics, you listened to the users, and you pivoted a little bit from you tag it with a barcode, and probably not pivoting, but iterating, you iterated right. on the idea and said, instead of you putting this goddamn sticker on everything you find in the real world and everyone's unique, which means there'll be no critical mass, oh, well, screw it. You know, Diet Dr. Pepper, if there's a group of people like myself who are addicted to that stuff. It's like crack or heroin. And if we're all scanning it, well, the barcodes are the same. And now you've got some sort of critical mass. Right, exactly. And, and the, other, the one other uh, factor that we knew that we, we were onto something there is that we were getting just tons and tons of brands contacting us. How can we work with you? Because uh, basically it allows this, this social layer of interaction without app doing anything with their product other than just signing up with us and, and coming up with a campaign. Uh, and so uh, talk to me a little bit about, and oh, by the way, you can ask a question if you're live uh, every Tuesday and Friday. We have the show at 1 p.m. Pacific time, ustream. TV slash this weekend. Uh, if you're in the chat room, you can ask a question live. How, Tyler? Um, just log into the chat room and ask a question. But if you put a Q with a colon, 
then it'll jump out. It'll, it'll stand out a little bit more. And uh, they can ask a question on Twitter. Yes, pound okay. twist. Using pound twist. And uh, ask a good question, and we will uh, ask it to Billy Chasen, the CEO. Are you the CEO of this company? Yeah, co and co-founder. CEO yes. and co-founder of Sticky Bits. Uh, so tell me about this concept of using South by Southwest as the breakout event you tried it last year. The year before it was Foursquare's year. The year before it was Twitter's year. Um, it didn't work as a breakout moment for you, but it did work in terms of getting some intelligence and metrics that led you to what I think is a pot of gold, to be totally honest. Um, talk about uh, using an event like South by Southwest. Is it overused? Did it actually work? Uh, what was your, your game plan? Was this like some PR person's crazy idea, like, hey, let's take over South by Southwest? Because I feel like this South by Southwest, Tyler, it, it's just going to be like every single person trying to launch on the same day when they're supposed to be at the launch conference. Right. They're all going to be trying to run around the streets and get drunk people to use their product. Talk a little bit about it, Billy. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, there's a whole lot of noise at South by Southwest, obviously. Uh, and, and we actually, we started developing the product when I started talking about it with Seth. Uh, actually in at the end of 09 we we were talking about how this is an amazing product to try and launch at south by southwest so that was always our goal as we were developing uh within those hundred days before south by southwest to actually get it done and and we we had an entire schedule to actually develop the sticker packs i actually have one now i can show you and we 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 put a lot of planning into into south by southwest and i think it really paid off because um Everyone after South by Southwest and during everybody was tweeting out that uh, we basically gave one of the best things in the swag bag. Uh, everybody was super excited about it, and it also led to a ton of uh, initial kind of um, uh, talks with, with these brands. So, so for us, it was super successful in that regard. And then also, obviously, all the learnings of, of looking at our analytics afterwards. Um, how uh, have you funded the company to date? Uh, we we were venture backed, uh, so we initially raised um, uh, from from angels, and uh, our our full list now is um, is Polaris, uh, first round capital, uh, Chris Saka through lowercase capital, and Mitch Kapoor. Wow, that's a good uh, all star group. Uh, One point six million in your Series A. That means what do you got? Five ten people working on this project in New York. Uh, well, total money in is actually 1.9, and we—that was more of like a seed and ex, a seed extension round. Uh -huh. uh, so we, we kind of bundled that into uh, one round. Uh, haven't raised the A yet. The total—we have five people working on this right now. Uh, I'm sorry, you I, said five. I <laughs> guessed we, five. You guessed five. Actually, we have eight. I said five to ten. I nailed it. You got it. Tyler, any good questions in the audience? Uh, um, Billy? No, there's not, but I have a question. Okay. Um. So uh, Tyler just insulted the entire audience. Yes. We're sorry that you guys cannot form uh, a coherent question. Try harder. Tyler, what's your coherent um, question? What about the, the QR code kind of background in Japan and how, you know, how closely is that looked at and the, the kind of innovation they're doing over there with yeah, QR I mean, how, how inspired is this by the QR codes and, you know, all that nonsense over in Japan, which is obviously a huge trend and very trendy. And, w and why is it that they have, you know, are kind of five, ten years ahead of us on yeah, that? Yeah, why one? are they five, ten years ahead of us, Billy? Explain it. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think people are really scared of QR codes here. Uh, they're just starting to pick up a little bit better than, than last year. Uh, but they're these big kind of huge boxes that have a lot of data uh, connected to them. And uh, people don't really know what they're used for. I mean, they see them on like their UPS boxes, but they don't really know what they are. Uh, whereas everybody knows what barcodes are. So I, th I think there's there, there's some education there, and people are just starting to to use it. It's also it's not it's not backed by one company. It's just a technology. It's it's this is this is a way you have to actually download some other QR code reader. And if you look at every single QR code that's on every poster, it really just says, download a QR code reader. So the, the user's kind of like lost, like, okay, what do I search for? Mm -hmm. uh, and some of the readers don't even have QR in their name, so uh, it, it's, it's hard to find them. This is the big problem. This is, why, this is why Twitter came out with their own native applications and had them automatically put on everybody's phones, had the BlackBerry one, iPhone one, and they're just you know, default installed in most cases. It's because people are stupid. Mm -hmm. And they're just like, they don't even want to search for something, let alone if they have to search for 
a Twitter client called Twitterberry, you know, or Uber, you know, whatever. Like, it's hard for people. But this is more similar to the initial email problem. Did you, oh. that video that came out this week of Bryant Gumbel, whoever was confused about what email was? Yeah. They splashed the email on the screen. And oh, like, I didn't see that like, video. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> is that a telefax? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> is that an Instafax? And they stopped the show for 10 minutes to talk about the email. Whoa, address. what is like, this crazy yeah. thing? It's yeah. words in yeah. the air. Yeah. Is that words flying How through the I air? Use, what would I even do with that? What's the point? Right. Why wouldn't I call the person? Right. <laughs> it makes no sense. Well, right. in all fairness, confusing Brian Gumbel. That's a pretty low benchmark. I mean, that guy looks Katie, like he's... Katie Couric was right there next to Yeah, him. okay. She well, was she, like, I mean, if you're... Brian she, Gumbel's... She says, I think that's a way for people to talk to the producers and the writers or something. I, <laughs> right, the peons. Then like, he, she's like, oh, that's for them. For those people. This is weird. Yeah, very strange. No, but there's... Um, what, he's exactly right, which is people don't know what it signifies or yes. how, how to interact with it or what Can the Can I get a tattoo are. of a QR code on my body? That is scannable. Is the technology in the in in, in tattoos possible? And can I It'd have my followers get that? It would be a lot easier to do a barcode. Uh, would it be? Would a barcode actually work as a tattoo? Sure, if you have a really good tattoo artist, because it's all about the spacing and the the thickness of the line. So if if he screws up anything, then the barcode that you think is gonna say, uh -huh. uh, you know, hey, I'm I'm Jason. Follow me on Twitter is actually gonna be like a coke can. Okay, so there's a little bit of risk there. Well, unless you want to be real edgy and you do want to put a Coke can. Uh, can I put one on the side of Tyler's can. head? Yeah. And when you scan it. I see where you're going. It'll take you to. Uh, <laughs> the sponsor. Yeah, paper yeah. post. Right through the TV, right through the scan of the show. Like okay, this. so how, you got Ben and Jerry's to take a flyer on this. Um, who, uh, how do you, when you go into an advertising firm uh, and you try to explain to them this newfangled way of doing it, how do you, on earth, do you get a big company you know, since we have a lot of startups, a lot of tech guys and gals who are just terrible at selling, H how on earth did you get a major brand like Ben and Jerry's to do this? Did you call one of your board members and you called mommy and daddy and say, can you put me in touch with the right person? Or did you f cold call them or talk to their agency? Or did you tweet them? How do you get somebody big like that to embrace your, your very cutting edge technology? Yeah, so we, we, had, we had the, the lucky uh, kind of problem of, of a l whole lot of incoming coming in. So we, we didn't do any outbound. Uh, everything came in either the brands directly like Pepsi or through their agencies. Uh, and we had so much that we actually hired a, a, a biz dev guy to, to basically uh, spend full time on, on, on helping those brands and, and trying to get them. How did, they how did they find out about it? They were reading about you on the blogs or was it South by Southwest or well, how, did, how did Pepsi, I mean Pepsi is pretty cutting edge. I know they always do interesting stuff online, but how did they wind up finding you? Well, it, it definitely started with a, with with buzz um, articles through uh, through through blogs like TechCrunch, uh, South by Southwest. Um, we also uh, Pepsi and Campbell's. Uh, those relationships definitely. Uh, uh, one of our advisors is Gary Vaynerchuk, so he helped us with with a lot of those intros. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I guess through through the grapevine of of, of just hearing about sticky bits. Awesome. Uh, and what's next for the company? I mean, what, 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 is your, what is your next milestone? To get it from eight people with a good idea and a little bit of traction, what, what's the next level for you guys? Do you have to raise more money? Do you have to get more user adoption? I mean, you don't hear about sticky bits all day long, so I'm assuming the community is still kind of nascent and small. Is that, is that the big challenge now, is building a community base? Uh it, well, our, our biggest our biggest step right now is is working with these brands, uh, and and some of the bigger brands we're actually working with them to to even have custom solutions that are integrated, sticky bits experiences that are integrated within their own apps, uh, and so we're we're talking through with ah. a few brands about that. Ah, uh, so you download the Pepsi app or the Taylor Swift app, and Taylor Swift says in her app, scan my album and you'll get a free track. Right. Oh, that's clever. So you become a service bureau, a, a software as a service solution for other folks. Right, and and so that's what we're working on right now. We also actually just uh, released our Android uh, version two as well, and and that we 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 haven't even put it on our blog or tweeted it yet. But so this is the first time that we're we're actually saying it. But uh, 2.0 is now out there in the Android market. Ah. So you made the iPhone version first because iPhone had the market share. Now you understand, hey, Android's got more market share, and you're catching up with the Android. Which platform 
um, is more important to you guys? <laughs> uh, they're both equally important, although we did look at our numbers from, we, we launched with both Android and iPhone, uh -huh. and we looked at our numbers after South by Southwest, and iPhone had about 90% of our user base. So uh, for version two, we absolutely led with our iPhone app since that was our flagship. And, uh, and now we just got our, our Android app up to speed. But they're saying more Android licenses now are out, but maybe the usage isn't there. What, what, what do you think is causing the disconnect there? Um, Shouldn't it be 50-50 by now? Yeah, you know, I'm not really quite sure. I'm, 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 I'm definitely going to, to look at the analytics after we, after we really get some traction with the new Android app that's out. Uh, and people can actually scan and participate in the promotions with this new one uh, to see if, if, if it does go up to 50-50. I'm, I'm pretty excited. I hope that it does. And I've, I've, I've been also seeing all of this activity about Android usage. Uh, so, so I'm really excited about it. And, and all of this Android kind of bump happened uh, after, we, after we launched our initial version. How much money does it take in time to build an Android app compared to an iPhone app? I'm assuming, well, I don't, don't want to assume that you're doing these in-house. Are you hiring a firm to do it right now, or how are you doing it? Uh, it it's a mixture between in-house yeah. and, and working with some freelancers. Uh, the, the first version that we did was completely outside, uh, and, and there, there are tons of iPhone and, and uh, Android dev shops now, and, and they all give, depending on the complexity, it can t take anywhere from... Uh, four weeks to, to triple that. And average price for an iPhone app now seems to me to be like 20 to 40 grand. Does that sound about right to you? Around there. Yeah. Uh, they, they generally charge out per day, and I've seen people charge anywhere from, uh, from a, a thousand a day to 2,500 a day for work. Depends on their own reputation as well. Wow. Okay. Um, Tyler, questions from the audience. Uh, Did anybody the, in the audience step up with a good question? The, no, but they keep uh, the questions that keep coming up are um, they want to hear a sort of explanation about the differences with Scavenger. Yes, Scavenger, I think, is similar. Or well, Scavenger to me feels like the Facebook of the location-based space. Like they're adding every feature from every other startup. Is Scavenger a competitor? Uh, I I wouldn't. I wouldn't really say that they're our most direct competitor. We, we've, we had zero competitors when we launched, uh, and now we can count uh, definitely a, a handful of direct competitors uh, that are doing things either slightly different or, or you know, like there's, there's, there are ones that you can check into to products. I personally don't find that as appealing as checking into location. Um, and, and everyone's kind of having a different take on, on what you can add to a barcode since since you can add more than just what is the price of this thing. Ah, yeah. Well, so what are those other things you can add? I mean, you know the, um, what lot the Coca-Cola came from or what city you're in or where it was made or the birthday of the you know, beer? Or what, what, what else can you get from those barcodes? You could. That's actually a really interesting um, uh, idea. Um, Bruce Sterling actually had it in, in uh, one of his books, and, and we saw him at South by Southwest last year and kind of talked about it a bit, where uh, imagine if you can, can see the entire history of the product uh, before it gets to you, like all the materials used, uh, where they came from, yeah. and everything to that point, which would be actually uh, pretty enlightening. Yeah, you could actually see where it was made. This came from China. You could see the route it took. Imagine that each. Imagine if every item had GPS just like natively built into it, and every item on the planet just knew where it was traveling at all times. I mean, it's kind of scary. But um, any other questions from the chat room, Tyler? Uh, yeah, they got some. How how do you position this when you um, talk to a potential sponsor? Yeah. How, how, what do you, how do you position it? Does this come out of an experimental budget? Does it come out of the sweepstakes budget? How do they, the digital budget? How do they look at it? Uh, I think they're still they're still figuring that out as well with us uh, because because it's definitely different. And uh, so so with some people it is a sweepstakes budget, and with others it is just kind of like a digital like here here's we'll we'll buy some uh, we'll add media to it. We'll we'll put a promotion. Uh, Apple had a commercial, uh, sorry, um, Pepsi had a commercial uh, that they basically had uh, when you scan different Pepsi products that told them, told those people about uh, basically the future of PepsiCo. Uh, and so what happens if Foursquare, uh, sorry to ask this really dumb question, but it's, it's always the question that you, this is the, 
I'm going to channel the dumb VCs no, who call you every week. The VC question. <laughs> I got to have my BlackBerry in my so hand. What do you do? Here's, I'm going to ask you like a VC <laughs> would ask you. So uh, tell me, um, what uh, will you do when uh, Microsoft or Foursquare add this feature? Hold on one second. <laughs> oh, well played. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I really don't think that, that the location-based services out there are, are too interested in products right now. Uh, I, I think that there's enough heat uh, coming from from the their dozen competitors that they're they're trying to innovate in location-based services since nobody has has that complete completely hooked under their uh, you know who's the clear winner there? Uh, you could say Foursquare, you could say Facebook, just because of size. Uh, but as far as activity, you know, it could be a toss-up. Um, yeah, <laughs> I saw. Um, <laughs> I saw Zach <laughs> at Davos. Yeah. Um, and he was so, using Foursquare. Uh, can we lob in? Uh, can we lob in a term sheet at the last round's valuation? <laughs> and I'd like three of the four board seats, and I want to name the independent. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. My performance. That's pretty good, actually. It's pretty good, right? Yeah, it's pretty bad. accurate for the yeah. VCs I've been in rooms with. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, I think you answered the question entrepreneur brilliantly, which is, yeah. hey, they got their own problems. Yeah. I mean, Foursquare and Gowala have to deal with Facebook, right. and they're going to have to deal with Google Latitude, and Longitude, or whatever the hell like, they're doing over there. I mean, everybody's got their own problems of competition, and it takes singular focus in order to win in a market, and nobody has e come even close to winning this market. And we will singularly focus on just this. We're going to solve the biggest problem for merchants and people selling product, which is to get a direct relationship with the people who are using their product now. Nothing in the marketplace gets you to the customers consuming your product at this very this, moment. I, it's real time. But it's not more I'm getting than, excited. Not, not only is it real time, it's it expresses intent in the same way that search engines do. It does. And, you know, it, in some ways it's like a real world Google. It's like right. I have intent. It, I have uh, now some entered a in barcode this, into yes. yes. And so you've you've opted into Correct. Diet sodas, yes, and I, you know, now you know this person or a Toyota Prius right. or whatever. Right. Um, Billy Chasen, thank you for being on the program. It is uh, a very cool product. It's very refined. I love the design. I have to tell thank you, you, like, the original design was kind of butt ugly, and now it's gorgeous. Beautiful logo. Yeah. Who did this design work? Is this in house or you hired a firm? No, this is uh, this is actually a, a joint venture between Metalab and Sofasad, both super talented firms. Metalab, and who's the other one? Soft facade. Soft facade. Who, who does yeah. what part? Is one the illustration and one the uh, back yes. end? Yes. Soft facade does illustration work. Uh, Metalab does too, but Metalab it, it is also just fantastic in doing page layouts. Soft and facade. Like, wow. Where's soft facade out of? They're in <laughs> Russia, actually. They're in Russia? Yep. Wow. And look at those beautiful icons. Man, that is a great tip right there. I'm going to call soft facade. What do they charge you for something that's that beautiful? Is That, like, that looks like about a $12,000 job right there. They, uh, you know, I'm not sure what their what their going rates are. They charge out on the hour, and it's oh. it's 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 competitive to what you would be paying here in, in the U.S. Oh, um, really? So they're that oh, yeah. good? The Russians are getting paid what the Americans are getting paid. No yeah. discount for shipping the job American jobs over there, huh? I think it's uh, I think it's more expensive <laughs> to live in Russia, isn't it? Exactly, I don't know. it is actually. Uh, so what do you what do you think you spent on the the design of a site like this? Is it fifteen twenty five grand to build something as beautiful as this? Uh, in terms of just the illustration design side, what would it go for? I, I mean, it, again, it depends on how much you're 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 racking up hourly and whether you're doing projects and hourly. But you can definitely spend uh, you can definitely spend a few thousand, uh, and you know it, it can go up and up depending on how much you actually need. Wow, evasive. Um, but uh, <laughs> it's okay. I'm, I always try. You no, know, I always try to get the number out of people because I'm just curious what they spent. You know, yeah. it's like when I see you in those blank label yeah. shirts. I'm always like, "What does that cost?" Yeah, I do the same. I've been doing it a lot myself lately. Asking it's because it's in, well, yeah. When we do the launch conference, yeah, like, a lot of time I'm I'm really curious, like how much have you how put much into did you that? put into that? Yeah, because you want to know what they spent on well, something you, like that. You yeah. want to get a sense for market cost or doing things so that you can say to somebody, "Oh, you got a really good deal." Well, on actually, that, what or, I'm doing is I'm just taking the 1.9 million he's got in the bank and I'm calculating how many months of runway he has because ah. he's got eight people. I think he's spending uh, about he's spending about 75k a month. Those stickers and we got in He already blew through about 800. <laughs> He's got, uh, you got 17 months left in the bank at the current barn? <laughs> 16 months? 
I'm, I'm, no comment on that. I'm in the I'm in the ballpark. <laughs> I'm in the ballpark. Yeah, I'm always good at that guessing burn rate. I get people. Some people are like, my God, you guessed it down to like within a month. Um, hey, Mahalo's got 9,600. I found out today we have 9,600 months of runway in the bank. Yeah, we burned eight dollars last month. Um, Billy, uh, congratulations on making a beautiful product, uh, iterating your way in 2.0 to what I think is a winner. And I think uh, if people want to get in touch with you because they want to work for you or they want to spend money with you, if they're a brand, we got a lot of brands that watch the show. Is it just Billy at StickyBits.com? Yeah, that's my my personal email, and uh, you can also do help at StickyBits cool. uh, as well if you have any help questions. Hey, if I'm an incredible developer and programmer, and I want to come work for you, I can just email Billy at StickyBits as well. Email me personally, absolutely. Okay, and you're, where's your where's your office located? You didn't, you look like you're in Soho there. Yeah, we're uh, close. We're in Union Square, in New York. Ah, Union Square, very nice, Union Square Ventures. Why didn't you get Union Square Ventures as a uh, VC? They passed? <laughs> did, they pa did you pitch uh, them? Uh, we, uh, we definitely talked with Fred, but... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. Uh, I, love, I mean, you have a really good list of um, uh, investors. First round is awesome. Sock is, that's the gold standard right there. Polaris, they're awesome with their, with their um, dog patch labs and all that kind of stuff. Are you in Dog Patch Labs? No, you have your own. That's where we, we were actually there for six months, and ah. uh, we were able to get office space right above it on uh, a few floors up. Oh, you're in a great location. So what's the yeah. deal with Polaris? Explain to the users, sorry to um, say goodbye to you and then ask you another question, but um, Polaris has Dog Patch Labs in Boston, New York, and San Francisco. Yeah. They let people sit there. Do they get some stock in your company for you sitting there, or do they just let people who are cool sit there for free to maybe get an investment opportunity? Yeah, it's 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 actually they don't they don't require anything really. It's it's just super low rent for entrepreneurs um, to to build things. And uh, there may be about a dozen companies at Dogpatch when we were there, and only two of them were actually uh, Polaris investments. Us and this other one, uh, Jibe. Yeah, so, Jibe. I'm an investor. Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Joe Westenfield. Yeah. So that's yeah. a really. I think this is why I think Polaris is smart, because Polaris mm -hmm. like. Um, I wouldn't. They're not as high profile as a Sequoia, they may not Andreessen. Have gotten jive. They may not get. The, you know, the thing is, I don't think that they're as high profile as right. Sequoia or Benchmark, Kleiner or Andreessen Horowitz. But they're good. But by giving the free office space, man, what a genius marketing thing! Like free or like below market office space. You're hanging out. You get to see the. They're all cool guys at Polaris. Right. And because that's what happened, right? You, you met the guys. You're like, yeah, hey, I can work with these guys because you're in this, their office every day, and they're not d bags or anything, right? right? I, I mean that that definitely does happen with us. It was it, we they were our investor first, and then we moved into Dog Patch. Ah. But it, I mean, it, it, you're right. It, it works both uh, in the favor of of them as an investor. They get to see these these really early companies, and as an entrepreneur, you're you're in the same room with a whole lot of people that are in the same position as you and have the same questions and like, what lawyer should we use? Uh, who should we yeah. use for for um, for HR and payroll and things like that? And so it, it's a really nice community to just basically figure out uh, all those mysteries when you're starting out. Uh, Billy Chasen, thank you for being on the program and continued Thanks luck so with Sticky Bits. Everybody email Billy at stickybits.com and tell me you did a great job on the program. And follow him uh, at Billy Chasen on Twitter. Uh, and download the Sticky Bits app on iPhone or Android. 2.0 just came out. See Sounds good. Time. Thanks, Jason. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, good, he's a good guest. Yeah. He's funny. He's got a good yeah. sense of humor, and he's yeah. honest. It's nice. I, I like this. I, you know, getting to a company a little earlier. You should get them. A lot of times, this week in startups is becoming a victory lap. You know, it's like, hey, I'm NJ Moco, boom. Yeah. You know, or hey, it's Groupon, I'm Andrew, boom. You yeah. know, like we get a lot of booms on the mm -hmm. show. I want to get like a little, a lot of pops. You know, like boop. You know, we got to get a couple of those going. Like this is something that's you're going to hear about next year. Yeah. Um, I really do believe that, and you can tell. It's just like. The name is good. Mm -hmm. Like if he was pitching this, we'd be like, good name, oh. beautiful design, and he actually has a business model. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like, it's good stuff, but it yeah. took him a year. Because remember they showed it's, it to us last year? Yeah. Were well, you there at that we party at with that Mexican? Cash. No, no, but also we, we were at that Mexican restaurant. They were handing the, oh, the South stickers, by Southwest. South by Southwest. They we were, were handing it out at the, the, the dinner, stickers. Right. Yeah, the dinner. It's, it's one of those things where, like I was saying, like email yeah. early on, the initial adoption is going to be very hard going because people don't understand because they're yeah. Other people aren't on it, and then once people are on it, it goes. Twitter had the same problem. You know whose adoption is not going bad is uh, Sang uh, Sangrid, Sangrid, Sangrid. They are getting a ton of adoption. I see people on Twitter who are building websites saying, thank you, at Jason, thank you, at Steep Decline, for recommending 
at SendGrid, and SendGrid's got a great social media person because they they respond to everything instantly. I bet you if you've got a startup, you could ask them to waive fees for six months or a year, and they'd probably do it because they're there to support the startup community. They're the industry leader in something called transactional emails. Transactional emails, give me an example of one, Tyler. Password resetting. Give me another example. Um, you just signed on to a new account. You just signed on to a new service. You get the welcome message. The welcome message. What else? Your friend just tagged you in a photo with you and your dog. What else? You go on for days. You can go on for days. Any you've ever gotten Password from a reset, purchase yeah. receipt, shipping notifications, friend yeah. follower requests, yeah. everything. Uh, transactional email is the lifeblood of your startup. If you don't get it right, what's going to happen? Your competitor is going to do it. Yeah, and it's damn, it damn straight is what's going to happen. That's why Foursquare uses Zengrid, and a ton of other people use it. It just works. Look at the beautiful logo and design. You can tell this is a great company because I'm looking over Tyler's shoulder. This is gorgeous. You know, like, details matter. You know, we're just talking about sticky bits. These guys, and we talked about focus. He asked the question, hey, what happens when Foursquare comes into mm -hmm. your space? Said, well, listen, we're focused on one thing. Zengrid is focused on one thing, getting those critical, critical emails to your new customers. Transactional emails, they have to be perfect. This is not like your email to your aunt. This isn't like Elf Yourself. This is an important email. It has to come out for a free basic plan for three months. Use promo code IWATCHTWIST. For a free basic plan for three months, use promo code IWATCHTWIST. I think that was Mo. Mo's like a robot, the sales guy Mo. You know yeah. Mo? Jason, can I ask you a question? I'm like, you already came up and like, you just asked the question. He asked me if he could ask a question. <laughs> you know, the sponsors, they were very happy with your performance. <laughs> Thank you, Mo. I'm really glad that they were just, I was speaking with Sengrid. They were happy he. <laughs> Mo 3000. Oh, no. You know Mo, right? Of course. He's so nervous because he's like, he just like, every time after he gets a sale, he just feels like he has to make sure the sponsor gets. Yeah. He's he terrified loved, that the sponsor is not going to have a good experience. He just loves showing love to the sponsor. He does. I, I just wanted to say to you, Jason, that that was a good read. Is it okay if they he, tweet I, that? If the, the, I mean, as a sponsor, I would love somebody like Mo because he really... He's anxious. Uh, it's not that he's anxious. He, he wants to make sure it goes well. He wants to make sure it goes well. He's a, he's, uh, he's a little nervous But sometimes. he's not just like close, getting your check and it's done. Like He's like, no, he's no, no, servicing. No. He, he basically, he's like... Ev I, I, when, I, when I leave the studio, he's like buzzing around. He's like C-3PO. He buzzes around on my way into the studio and he buzzes around on my way out. Oh, Jason, is there a way that you could... Get DNA mail and extra plug on your Twitter account. And I'm like, yes, I'll do it, whatever. I wish you just give the guy the login to my Twitter account. Then I come out, that was great. Thank you for doing such a great job with the MailChimp advertisement. They're very happy. <laughs> <laughs> the Mo 3000 robot. <laughs> okay, let's do a Shark Tank. Somebody asked if we were smoking weed before the show. This is California. It's basically... Is it legal here yet? I'm not I mean, give been, me a break. I, I mean, haven't been following these. I mean, it's like next to the uh, Whole Foods is like the Whole Buds, you know? It's like, yeah. it's a section of Whole Foods now, basically. That's what it's come to. Like, you're like, oh, where's the organic, you know, soy milk and I need some purple haze, you know? Like, it's... No, we don't smoke pot before the show. We don't smoke pot, period. Uh, on the call, I mean, some of the crew does. Um, I'm pretty sure of that. Um, they're all laughing. Guys, I know when I see you guys go for that, that long walk in the afternoon, I know what's going on. I am no fool. If I worked for me, I would smoke pot, too. Don't, don't feel bad. Um, who's a, I can't even read my own notes. Oh, so, it feels so, like maybe I did smoke just, weed. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the Dude, who is on the pro? No, I don't smoke weed. By the way, I can't figure out how to read my show. <laughs> what can is somebody, going on? Can somebody Dude, help does me with anybody have any Cheetos? Yeah. Okay, who is on the line? I feel like I'm talking to Sean White. Is that the Shane Snow? It's this 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 uh, is Is it what's his name? Shane White. Uh, Sean, Sean White. White. Sean, Sean White. White. I, Welcome I, to the program. I get, I get that a lot. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm so, also good at snowboarding. Here we go. We're on the um, 
We're gonna do a live Shark Tank. Are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Okay, three, two, go. Okay, our company, Contently.com, is crowdsourcing for professional writing. Businesses today know that they need to be publishing on the web, but hiring in-house writers is expensive and managing freelancers and outsourcers takes a lot of time and you often end up with pretty low quality work. So we believe that the future of the web is in shareable, high quality content. So we've built a system that can deliver quality content from writers with domain expertise to businesses that need that content at a moment's notice. So we manage the vetting of writers, matching qualified experts with assignments, editing, and all the way through automatically posting to the publisher's sites if they want. It's all powered by crowdsourcing in our technology platform. So we haven't launched yet, but we're beta testing with a few hundred writers and a dozen publishers, including a couple well-known brands. And we make money by taking a percentage of all the orders in our system. Beautiful. Uh, good name. Yes. Nice Thank logo. You. Yep. Um, described a, a problem. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get good writers. Yep. Takes time managing mm -hmm. them. Uh, and a good system. Hey, goodbye plagiarism, auto post, a lot of good details in there. It's a perfect pitch, and in my in my estimation, I give it like an eight or nine on the pitch, maybe eight. And a, I'll give it, I'll give it like an eight and a half on the pitch. Maybe if he had put one more example in there, something a little more killer, I would have gone nine. And in terms of as a business, it reminds me of a better version of. Um, uh, it's almost like an open version of the content farm at eHow, or maybe. Uh, AOL Seed or whatever, Demand Studios. You know, it's like a um, Crowdflower, I guess, is another one that yeah. sort of does this, but it's very, this is just focused on copy. Yeah. So I, as a business, I, this is like a business I would, um, I would, uh, you know, Invest I guess I wouldn't in. use because I'm a writer myself, but, right. you know, if I needed writing help, this might work actually pretty well. Right. Tyler, what, I, so maybe I give it like an eight as a business. I don't feel like it's going to be huge, but right. I could this being a very good business. Yeah. So what do you think, Tyler? What do you think uh, of the presentation? Quick question. What's your background related to this, if any? Okay. Um, so I've actually talked to you on your show before, um, pitching Dinosaur. Um, oh, yeah. And, and we... Uh, D-I-N-O dot S-R? Dot S-R. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, what was that? That was, project, that was the social network for video gamers. Um, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and when I pitched uh, Rob to, uh, to put me back on the show, I wanted to... I, I told him that I would love to talk about how we killed Dinosaur because we basically loved the idea, but we figured, we found out that there was really not a need there. Um, and so as we were building the product, we, we decided to basically kill our baby, which was really uh, kind of difficult to do. But um, my background originally is in journalism. Um, I write for Mashable and I've written for, you know, freelance for Wired and Fast Company and various other that's publications and so see, this, is, this is a classic because people get romanticized about a problem that they think people have and then they yeah then they start focusing on things that they know do what you know yes. exactly yeah because that I was feeling that like when you're you did pitching get the this, sense I yeah, was get like the he, sense like he has he's some had this problem yes. he solved this problem before yeah. so give me scores give me scores well, uh, my score on the pitch was uh, I gave it eight and a half yeah it's eight half solid. Uh, leaning towards nine, mm. and the wow. um, so yeah, he, he's watched a lot of. The you program. know what though, I this is a good one for people to look at because it's got the basic bottom. You you can tell you didn't spend a ton on this site, right? But but it looks great, perfect enough to get the whole point across. Looks good, reflects yeah, this good. This is not like sticky bits where you're trying to ev evoke like some cool hipster brand. It's not a right. hipster thing. This is a this is a utility. It's a tool. Right. So would you just explain what it does? Right. Simple. And bi and it should convey confidence. Right. And that's what this design is. You got a nice font going with the nice little I mean, audience. All, says the full, nine package, eight, nine the full eight, package is there. Yeah. 9898 nine, eight, 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 six. These are really good scores. I see a seven seven eight eight nine eight eight eight. What is your score on, on, on it's a business? On the business? As you heard it. Uh, I like this one for uh, kind of a first time hmm. you know. Yeah. Like a young entrepreneur feels young like a good on, yeah, this feels exactly. like something you could do. How old are you, yeah. Sean? White? Uh, <laughs> um, I'm 26. 26. Okay, so you're not that young. I mean, this is a good, no, good but it's a good first business. You could yes. actually make money with this. Yes. Okay. Um, so now pitch me as if I'm a VC. Uh, ask me. Uh, tell me how much money you. Here, here's my question. So uh, how much are you looking to raise, <laughs> and at what valuation? Um, okay. Hold on so one second. Hold on one second. Hold on one. Okay. Go ahead. Mm. 
How Hang much are you looking to raise? What, uh, what valuation? That, that, you, you, have to, you have to do it right then when you put it in. Sorry, my wife just had to something. No, you know, you know what happened? My wife, yeah. she's killing me because yeah. we have net jets and yeah, it's crazy exactly. because now she's like the net jets. Uh, it's not enough because she does. They only they don't have, serve diet coke. Well, no, no, it's not that. She, that's good. <laughs> to serve whatever you want, but yeah. she wants a Falcon. They have Gulfstream. She likes the Falcon because it's tall. It's a foot tall. I say, hey, listen, you're five foot six. What do you care about if it's a six foot six roof or a six? You're not even coming close to it. You understand what I'm saying, Sean? Right? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. No, no this is. <laughs> this is. I'm just goofing on you. We're gonna. I know. I, we have to develop this the, character. I, I like we it. We have to develop like the it. the VC. We should come up with a. Oh, you know who it could be? Hmm. Do you remember the VC, who had me fly up to his office? Yeah. And then canceled the meeting, while I was en route to his office, and I had yes. ta only taken that meeting. Yes. I had already raised the money from all, but I only yes. took the meeting. Because a friend of his got him the meeting. Yes. And then I got to his office. Remember that guy? Yes. D bag? Yes. Oh, that was crazy. We actually went to, we were like, okay, well, we're right outside the lobby. We'll go into the lobby. Oh, I'm going in the lobby. Oh, yeah, you can't tell me about me. I am going yes, in the lobby. You're right. going to cancel to my face. That's right. And he said, oh, let me buy you sushi. I said, you're going to buy me sushi? Yeah. You, oh, really? Yeah. Sushi? <laughs> mm, I don't I can't wait to put that guy's name. I'm going to put his name in my book. When I write the book, it's going to be the guy who tried to. Destroy my career, the high profile angel who was gonna try to get me fired with Sequoia, and then the VC who canceled the meeting while I was en route. And I'm gonna put the emails in the book, like a literal email from them. Let's do the news. Sean, good job. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. We're cutting to the news intro? I think that's probably what we're okay. supposed to do. All right, I'm checking my email over here. <laughs> Somebody's not paying attention. Hey guys, dude. Okay, Kathy is here with the news. What's the news? There's lots of news today. ATDHE.net has been seized by Homeland Security. Did you read about hey this? Oh, yes, I tweeted it. I blogged it. ATDHE.net is a site that allows people to watch TV online for free. Yep. Usually sports, but there's a lot of other programming from the major networks also. And it's come under fire as to copyright restrictions. Yep. So what does this mean? Does this mean we're all at the risk of getting the gauntlet by Homeland Security? It's uh, a little disturbing. Here's the, I put the, uh, my, on calacanis.com, there's the, um, you can zoom in a little bit, but there's just like, when the, when the home, Department of Homeland Security takes your website right now, <laughs> they give you this beautiful... They do it with style. They redirect to this like <laughs> page that's like got the logos and the badges. It almost looks like it's fake. And it then does. they got the time. They put an exclamation point. Yeah, like well, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's an exclamation point. That's mine. No, no. Oh. It, it, with the red border is okay. the, the website. But <laughs> it looks like a certificate. Zoom in. It looks like a certificate. Like I just graduated from the FBI or something. <laughs> but um, as people know, when I was in Europe, I wanted to watch the Jets game. It was two or three in the morning in Germany, and I was trying to find a stream. And I saw somebody had tweeted this thing. I click on it. It's a d t h e dot net. Right. And I'm watching the Jets game, and I'm like, how is this legal? And I tweeted, like, how the heck is this legal? And then sure enough, a week later, the Department of Homeland, somebody's like, do you think that this is related? I said, you know, I do think it is because I tweeted to 100,000 people. How could this exist? That and, and like 50 people responded back to me, shh, don't say anything about ADTHE.net. And it turns out these guys aren't even the problem. Um, there are some streaming sites, not Ustream, but the other one. I'm not going to give them a hard time, Justin TV. <laughs> that seem to no. I, I've never found an illegal stream on Ustream, but on Justin TV, during and I don't mean to rat guys out. I'm sorry, but it's a news story. We're talking about the news. Justin TV will not show on the homepage that they're streaming stuff, but when you go deeper into Justin TV, it is all soccer games and you know all kinds of stuff from all around the world. YouTube, All ATDH. YouTube was built on a similar sort of. <clears throat> Listen, I'm not giving those guys. They're it's, it's common a, carrier. They're letting it, people use. U, the, it's a it's, platform. It's a UGC platform. Yes. So you know, in but all, in all fairness, but it takes time to figure that stuff out. I know. It's, I'm sure that they don't look at their own metrics and see that the platform is being used Mahalo, for soccer games. Mahalo had similar problems to their credit. I have no bone to pick here. Listen, if people use copyrighted, yes, so if people in their answers on a Q&A platform cut and paste plagiarism, yes. we, we take it down, of course. We, yeah. Somebody sent us a letter, we'll take it down. What do we care? Right. But this site was not even doing the hosting and streaming. All they were doing was aggregating the links from Justin TV and other places. Mm. Oh. But what, it do, what is particularly disturbing is that the Department of Homeland Security, which is like created for sort of 
is seizing domains because of copyright violations? What is that about? Yeah, That's exactly. Weird. And this is from the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Division. So immigration? I, what does immigration have to so do with this? No idea. This they, just sounds like some... So they literally grabbed the domain. I, it feels like Stasi. It, it literally feels like in Eastern Germany. that's Germany. the way to shut down the site, is forget trying to get the servers Yeah, well, why just, even bother? Just take right, the domain. And right. the, uh, what is GoDaddy's position on this? Like, right. Who, how do they do this? Right. And is it... Is that a first? No, it happened with um, either Torrent Freak or one of the, tor uh -huh. the Torrent sites. A bunch of them were somewhere before why, Christmas. What a, but, I mean, is this really, like, why don't we have a lawsuit, like in the old days, where you took somebody to court if they were stealing stuff, and there's a process? Yeah. Why did they do this with Pirate Bay? Why, did, why they, were they trying to get their I servers? think that somebody, I mean... Depends it, on where you register it? No, go, I mean, you can't, you, they can't go cross borders to do this. I mean, there, there's obviously other places in China that are doing this right now. Mm -hmm. what, what is happening with, in China is China has MP3 search and all these kind of mm -hmm. streaming things going on. If you're a U.S. address, mm -hmm. the concession these Chinese companies have made with the U.S. government and everything is they're blocking U.S. IPs. But you can mm -hmm. stream movie if you if you use a tour server or a mm -hmm. tour client and you have a different IP address that's non-US. Yeah. Just like you can listen to Spotify in the US if you have a non-US IP address, you can do the same thing in, for China. And in China, you just do a search for Bob Dylan MP3s, and it's like, hey, here you go, mm -hmm. download them. Um, but this is particularly disturbing. You just get to just. The, I mean, it would be the equivalent of the government, but disagrees with WikiLeaks in the New York Times. All oh, those were stolen documents. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we're shutting the press off. Boop, we turn the press off. I mean, this is the digital equivalent. Mm -hmm. it's, it's unbelievable that we're allowing this to happen. It's against all due process and fairness. Like, could you just, if you, if you disagree. Yeah, it's innocent until proven guilty kind of thing. Yeah, that, it's, we're just taking the name. I, it's bizarre. Well, hmm. one of the things we'll have to do is follow up and see where the yeah. government has posted why they were brought down, right? Yeah, well, I mean, it's obvious why they're brought down. They're stealing it, but what is the process here? I and mean, that's what we, we need to get somebody, you know, I was playing, I, I got a friend who was in the government. He's one of the cabinet guys, <laughs> and he works at one of the agencies with three letters. Mm -hmm. He runs it. Mm -hmm. CBS? <laughs> More like the FCC. <laughs> anyway, I met the guy who runs the FCC. Nice guy. Yeah. Uh, we had a lunch here for him I with a bunch of CEOs. Nice guy. We called this recently. Yeah, yeah. It's two weeks ago. <laughs> nice guy. Um, but I'm going to email him about this. Like, what is this about? I mean, it's not his jurisdiction. It's not right. the FCC, but... What it, I mean, it seems like it would be more theirs than Homeland Security or whatever. Almost, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. where I mean, can somebody in the government, in the Obama administration, if you know somebody, just email them and then email me, Jason at Calacanis or Jason at Mahalo, and let's talk about this. Like, why are we doing this? I mean, I know I caused this by Maybe the guy it. who was running it was here illegally. No. No. There's nothing. No, it's not an illegal immigrant ride. <laughs> well, but it's, it's that immigration. But it's the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Division. ICE. Within yes. Homeland and there, Security. I mean, I, I always thought it was like the. It sounded like the enemies of G.I. Joe or the Transformers. It was like, ICE took this website. And I was like, ICE took this website? Who's ICE? It's like the International Criminal <laughs> Executive. You know, it's like ICE. That's a pretty good, uh, ICE is a pretty good acronym. It is. It was like ICE and the D-H-S. That's a terrible acronym. Mm -hmm. Department of Homeland Security got screwed on their acronym. <laughs> ICE is cooler. I want to be part of ICE. To take your website. Okay, next story. Well, it's another story about the government. So I'm going to make a t-shirt, ICE took my website. <laughs> I went to Washington and ICE took my website. Okay, next. <laughs> well, another story about the government. The White House is collaborating with Facebook, Google, and IBM to support entrepreneurship and startups. Wait a second. Facebook is supporting entrepreneurship? How? Well, I... so check this out. Yeah. In a program <laughs> called Startup America, the Small Business Administration doesn't give money directly to companies, but works with Facebook, Google, and IBM to distribute the $2 billion to match private sector investment funding for startups in underserved communities and for early stage investing in firms with high growth potential. Mm. So while this affirms the importance of startups and entrepreneurship, is this another area where the government should be getting involved? Where our dollars go and what what startups get which it, dollars? It happens in many other countries. Hey, well, the Russians are investing in all the okay, companies. Yeah, that's blindly. Why yeah. shouldn't our government? That's an interesting point. Right. So uh, we, we've just announced that uh, the U.S. government is going to give one hundred fifty thousand dollars to every YC company. <laughs> it's bizarre. But uh, no, of course we shouldn't be funding startups. It's bizarre, you know. But um, I do like the idea that they're trying to get things going. They could do a lot worse than give. Uh, help start. Well, I mean, if you're going to give billions of dollars to the financial institutions, like right, I, I made this point during the financial crisis. Like, we're going to give them billions of dollars, and they've proven they all they can do is destroy jobs and send them overseas, and you know, destroy wealth. And why don't we give it to startups? Right. But 
the, you're absolutely correct, Kathy. The government shouldn't be involved in this. It's like this is more important for things. Like, can they focus on the war in Iraq, balancing the budget? Or they've got to spend more money. Startups don't need their money. What do startups need their money? Solve the Visa Act. Mm. What startups need is for them to get out of the way. Now, the, the Startup America is a marketing PR campaign to inspire people to start companies. That's all virtuous. I disagree with giving money to startups. Like, a, who wants the government's money anyway? Like, exactly. It's like, how long will it take to get their money? Well, and, why, why wouldn't I want the government's money? <laughs> I don't know. Because you want less government and you don't want the government, then that means you, for every dollar they give away, they probably have to hire eight people to manage the dollar they give away, literally. They probably spend more money managing, right, giving the away the money, than they do giving away the money. Right, the government isn't exactly... And whose know, money is that? It's our money anyway. It's not exactly the place you go to for innovation or yeah. you know, speed to market or any but of that. But Steve Case is going to be involved in this, and I just actually have an email I just traded with him. Uh, you know, I'm going to name drop there. Um, old friend, yeah. Uh, <laughs> nice, great guy, Sir Davos. Um, <laughs> That's, that's my D-bag VC. I saw him in Vegas. I saw, I saw him in uh, Davos. Oh, Might have been Vegas, Jesus. I don't know. Uh, CES. Um, so anyway, it's great that Startup America is happening. It's a lot of good parts of the program. It's like a 50-point program. Uh, and part of it is Techstars is taking their incubator and making it international in a TEDx kind of a way, you know, mm. where it's like sort of affiliated people doing TED-like events. Mm -hmm. This is going to be affiliated people doing Techstars-like incubators uh, so just like I wrote in the launch uh, issue five, hey, 500 accelerators would be a great idea. That's what's happening uh, there. So I think it's great the country is rallying around entrepreneurship and okay. getting, and it's just amazing that this White House has Steve Case and David Cohen from Techstars like on their radar, let alone hosting an event with them. Like just that. I mean, for eight years with Bush, he was like, That's what, true. the internet? I have the internet. The interwebs. I have it. It's a series of pipes. I mean, we went from like these hillbillies who had no idea <laughs> how it works, you know, wanting to regulate it, and now we actually have considered. Go I mean, I'm not a huge. Everybody knows I'm not a huge Obama fan. I just got some problems going on there. Like, he, if he's so innovative, why can't he solve the visa issue? If this guy's got so much hope and he's such a genius, he actually addressed it in the State of the Union address. <sighs> but I don't care. What is he? Did. He specifically said, like, we have all, all these people coming over here to learn. And then we force him to go home and compete with us. He's like, That's we right. need to end it. That's crazy. We need to end I it. I know, but you know what? It's all talk. And what, was this, what is this, year 17 of his presidency? Like, it's just not, get it it's, done. It's not like he can just wave, <laughs> snip, snap. And well, he his... seemed to have done that on health care. <laughs> all of a sudden, he's got, he got health care through. It's a little bigger issue. It's a bigger issue. In a, uh, okay, last story. Last story. Um, Seismic landed $4 million from Salesforce in funding for its ability to help managers manage their ah, social we. networks. Ah, uh, yes. Right? It's going to be great, that's a, Louis. That's a, that's a lot of croissants. That is a lot of pain au chocolat for uh, <laughs> Louis. I had to get Louis on the program. I saw him when I was in uh, Germany at DLD. Mm. Great entrepreneur. Um, Mark, ba yeah, it sounds like $4 million, they, they might as well have just sold the company because that probably bought 25% of it or something. I mean, that's a lot of money. Um, and well, I it's don't totaling 16 million funding since the company was founded in 2008. Yeah. So is the key, I mean, is partnering the way to go? You basically work with a partner who becomes an investor then? This is That's called strategic money. Strategic money is a little bit dangerous. Um, it's also awesome because yeah. strategic money means you could get something with it, like mm -hmm. distribution um, or advice, uh, but generally something else. And strategic money is not valuation sensitive. So if Salesforce invests $4 million at a $16 million post money valuation, 20, 24, 40, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to them if they own 10 or 20 or 30% of the business. Mm -hmm. They want it to be involved in that business for strategic reasons, probably re related to Chatter, which is their sort of exactly. yammer knockoff. Right. So they pro it's, and this gives them optionality on buying out the entire firm, building a relationship. So Mahalo has News Corp, CBS, Berta, and a bunch of media companies. But I wanted media companies, so I was building a media company. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I like the idea that they're long-term investors who are not return, ba you know, not solely focused on return like a VC. Um, so they can add, but you've got to be very careful. If you get them in there too early or if they have too much power, then they could be like, oh, you want to sell this to Oracle? Mm -hmm. No, you know, or well, you want to partner with Oracle. So they could actually muck things up. So I would say it's kung fu level entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. and you do have to really think about exactly, do they get a board seat with this? Mm -hmm. If they get a board seat, does that mean that look, you know, who do they put on the board? Is it Mark Benioff, who's a great guy, or is it like, you know, like number seven guy? I don't have somebody for, you know, anyway, you get the idea. I'm sure, sure it's Mark. Louis and Mark seem to be close. I'm, yeah. I'm a big fan of Louis. So I like. I am too. Yeah. Great job. He does I a great think, job in the conference. I think he's a really good person to watch for the startup guys. That yeah. 
how well, he's been what iterating. he's done. Yeah, what he's been doing. With well, he started with video comments. Yeah. Then he went to Twitter clients, and yep. then he added Facebook. So it's like a social client. Yep. But I, you know, as I've said many times, like building on top of these other ecosystems yep. is not a real business. In a lot of cases, you know, like mm -hmm. two out of three people who build their business on top of somebody else's business, it's not going to work out for them. Maybe nine out of ten. Mm -hmm. So for every Zynga, there's going to be a lot of washouts. Mm -hmm. So he, he does a, a lot of strategic partnerships and maneuvers. He's good at the partnerships. I, man, yeah. He, yeah. he is awesome to watch. But when's think. the last time you used a Seisma client? I myself don't use it. I use, actually used to use it quite yeah. regularly. And he bought Twirl real early on. Yeah, I was using Twirl in the beginning. Yeah. I just feel like those clients, like, the web is getting so advanced with HTML5 and the new the new Twitter. I, like, I prefer the new Twitter interface than I do most of the clients. So why would I use the clients if I like the Twitter interface? On Twitter.com. The newest? Mm -hmm. Don't you like the Twitter.com client better? I use the, the new... Uh, Mac down, you know, downloadable desktop one, oh, which do. is Twirl. It's Twirl. It's, it's Twirl. It's yeah. Twirl. Which is what I said three years ago to yeah. him in private. Like, listen, yeah. if if you're doing this because you're filling a gap and then you're going to build some other business that leapfrogs you, great. But be aware that they will launch this business because I had all sort of talked to Evan and I was saying to Evan like, he why did he knows Evan really well? I yeah, mean, but I mean, don't don't so. they all realize like, hey, at some point, if that's where the majority of consumption is going to be, then Twitter has to be there. One more story. One more. Congratulations, Lily. One yes. more. T. Awesome. Spiller announces public launch over 20,000 certified accountants around the, 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 world, the U.S. Sorry, Users can find an accountant whether for taxes or other services and can search by geographic area. So we're seeing a lot of companies like this yep. in all the different verticals. In Vertical, verticalized lead gen, yep. Yep, so verticalized lead gen. What, what's the end game for a company like this? And who are the major players who are competing on a much like grander scale? Experian. Uh, owns mm -hmm. a lot of lead gen. They bought Shopzilla. They bought uh, Mac Coffin's Lower My Bills. Mm -hmm. And so they're really good at getting people into the funnel and then selling them. Uh, so what lead gen is, for people who don't know, uh, I collect, uh, on one side, I collect uh, all of the people who are providing a service. And on the other side, I collect people who want the service. I blindly, or I take the people who want the service and I send their, I qualify them in some way. Okay, you're looking for an accountant in Santa Monica or Brentwood? Oh, or Bel Air? Okay, right. the accountants in, you know, if you're looking for an accountant in Bel Air, that means you're like up here, and Brentwood's here, and Santa Monica's here, and Venice is here. So maybe literally it's eight, seven, six, and five dollars, the value of each one of those leads. So they create a lead marketplace, and people will bid for the leads. And this was the genius that Lower My Bills was. Matt Coffin did Lower My Bills, and he was during the height of the real estate market when people were getting mortgages by like basically waving their hand over the page without mm -hmm. even signing it. It was just like, yeah, I want that, and all of a sudden the money was in the bank. Um, he was selling for thirty, forty, fifty dollars leads, and people were like, oh my god, I just closed seven mortgages this week and made fifty grand as a mortgage broker. I'm going to spend that seven grand buying a ton of leads, and it didn't matter if only one out of five worked out because. And they were bidding against each other, so it's just beautiful, unlimited upside. Uh, but then, as things got bad, well, are these qualified leads? Uh, you know, the leads aren't so good. So you're in sales, you understand. Like the leads, leads are, are, what's that? The leads are weak. The leads are weak. You're weak. <laughs> the leads are weak. Uh, anyway, so if you can get a vertical one like this going, that's nice, um, and you could wind up flipping the company, or mm -hmm. you can make a lot of money from it. Uh, or you could be somebody who builds a consumer proposition like Thumbtack, which I'm an investor in, which is, or Red Beacon, which I'm not, but which one, TechCrunch 50, where you build a destination site that does lead gen and is across a number of places. So you can either do lead gen where you hold the lead and then send it to them for a yep. fee, or you could charge, the other way to do it is to charge the person providing the service for a listing, and that's the listings kind of business. Mm -hmm. So Angie's List or those kind of places, I believe they charge the people to be listed there, or they'll charge people for access to the list. There's like two or three models in that space. Lead gen is a great one. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you, Kathy, for reading the news. Uh, thank you, um, Billy Chasen, for being the founder of Sticky Bits and doing a great interview. Thank you, blah, 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 at GoToMeeting, thank you. Mm. At Sangrid, thank you as well. And Shane, thank you for a great pitch. We'll see you I'll, all. You know what? I'm going to throw in a last minute Hail Mary. Really? What? It's the, like? It, you know, the, I was just thinking. You were just that's thinking. How, that's how these things happen. <laughs> they just, you can't you control just, them. No, there's it just no happens time there's no rhyme or reason. The government getting into the money thing? The government getting into financing the, startups. Yes. Financing startups. And angel investing. Yes. Is. It just occurred to me. Yeah. It's like a light switch on a watermelon. Okay, the government investing in startups is like a light switch on a watermelon. Yeah. The government 
is the watermelon, and the light switch is the government. Explain. I can't. L- figure light that. switch is very useful. Yes. As is money. Yes. Watermelon's great. Right. Together. Put something about putting the two together. The, the something just doesn't inherently. They don't necessarily they don't go match. well together. They yes. don't necessarily go well together. Right. It's not peanut butter there's and no, chocolate. Right. There's no real. Okay. Purpose. Well, there you go, folks. There's the inside. It's like a light switch on a watermelon. I I, I picture a T-shirt. <laughs> See you next time. I'm liking the lifestyle. That's what it's all about, man. They said money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Yeah. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you.